So some big news ahead of the Ravens Commanders matchup tomorrow. Uh, the Ravens are the number one rushing team in the league in the NFL, but the Commanders are not far behind because they are number two. But tomorrow they will be without their top leading rusher, Brian Robinson Jr. Let's read the report from Ian Rappaport. He said the Commanders have downgraded running back Brian Robinson Jr. to out with a knee injury. He had been questionable. Austin Eckler starts. And the significance about that, uh, Brian Robinson Jr., he leads the commanders with 325 rushing yards, also five touchdowns. So he ain't been no stranger to the end zone at all. But the next closest person to him in rushing yards, besides Jaden Daniels, because Jaden Daniels got 300 rushing yards. Brian Daniels has, I mean, excuse me, Brian Robinson Jr. has 325 rushing yards. Jaden Daniels has 300, but he's at quarterback. The next closest is Austin Eckler with 150. So he got less than half of the rushing yards that Brian Robinson Jr. has. Um, so a lot is going to be on Austin Eckler's plate, um, but that obviously, ob we're not celebrating no injury, so don't get it twisted, um, but that does benefit the Ravens a lot, the fact that they will not be dealing with uh, a Brian Robinson Jr. That's a big blow uh, to the commanders. Now, it's still going to be a tough game because you know the commanders, they, they still going to bring it regardless of Brian Robinson being out, uh, but that is a very significant loss uh, for Washington. Now, sticking with running back news, this time on the Baltimore Ravens side of things, they have officially activated uh, rookie fifth round pick running back Rasheen Ali. So he will be making his NFL regular season debut tomorrow. Of course, Derrick Henry and Justice Hill, they've been holding it down. So shout out to the both of them. Um, but it'll be nice to just have even more depth uh, at the running back spot. Uh, so both of those guys, they can be even more fresh, especially down the stretch. Now, we're still waiting for one more running back to get activated, but we, 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 we got to wait. We're going to continue to be patient while we wait for Keaton Mitchell. But there were some other moves that the Baltimore Ravens made as well. Um, they are using a practice squad of ele elevation on Yannick Ngakwe. So, Yannick, well, he was active last week for the Bengals game. Even got, uh, I believe, 11 snaps. So, he'll be active for this game as well. I would not be surprised if his snap count gets ramped up just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, also, uh, he talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, they're, they're going to be without Malik Harrison. And Malik Harrison is tied for, this is from Jess Rebick, by the way. He said, Malik Harrison is tied for the team lead in special teams snaps. So, Obviously, Malik Harrison plays a lot of defense. He's on the defense, but he plays a whole lot of special teams as well. So even though I know a lot of Ravens fans like, oh, Malik Harrison, they should have him inactive, even if he was held. Again, I think it's been more coaching than anything, just having him in bad positions on defense. Malik Harrison is not a bad player. They just haven't had him in positions where he excels. But when he gets back, hopefully they can fine tune that. But anyway. Um, Jess Rebick said that the Ravens will need to replace those special team snaps. And he said it could be a spot for undrafted free agent safety, Bo Bray, to make his debut. So that will be something right there. And he said it will be quite a story for Bo Bray, who played locally at River Hill and then, of course, at Maryland for college. Now, I want not, they probably wouldn't, though. But I want, I wonder if they would sort of ease them in on defense like obviously special teams because that's where you got to start and i know it, it's tough but hey look i didn't even think bo bray was gonna make the roster so with him making the roster why not try him out or with the starting defense why not like i, I would the ravens do it though most likely they wouldn't but you never know you never know because when i think about the plays that have broken down the most with the baltimore ravens the majority, they, it, it, a lot goes on on Eddie Jackson's side. A whole lot goes on on Eddie Jackson's side. And he's certainly been struggling. I mean, Ravens' whole secondary been struggling for sure. It ain't all on Eddie Jackson. But um, I just wonder if they would give Bo Braid a shot there. Maybe. Probably not. But, hey, you can't rule nothing out. Now, we hear my favorite part of the videos where we get to feature your questions. Let's dive straight into it. First question came from my guy, Keontae, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. Appreciate you, Keontae. He said, in great, my guy, I just have something simple. How quickly do you think we will see the shift from Dean Pease? In my opinion, I think his purpose is to get or thinking a little more situational in key moments. My second thing is, all right, so first, with that part, um, how quickly do you think we'll see the shift uh, with Dean Pease coming along? Uh, I, we'll see. We'll see. I hope that it will be something that will be immediately felt in a positive way, though, because we don't want to see no negative shift because this defense, they already negative enough. Uh, we want to see a positive shift. And again, it's been the same thing. The big, It's been second half. 
Second half. It's been the issues in the second half. So in the first quarter, oh yeah, Zach O's been amazing. And for the most part, in most games in the second quarter, been great. But then it's that third and fourth quarter where it gets a little bit shaky and a lack of adjustments. They start to come into play. But um, hopefully with Dean Pease, he can just help Zach or get have another set of eyes, just watching everything, just going over everything, just looking at everything from a different perspective. Uh, his, uh, his next question, he said, um, my second thing is I've been seeing Christian Kirk being tied to us. I think the spacing he would provide would be great. But... My guy to go after is Romeo Dobbs. Uh, I know he is improving, but he is big and could be another big target guy. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, I know he's a baller. He's falling out of favor over there with the Packers. He came out and did his public apology thing. You know, that whole PR thing got to go. Um, but, yeah, that that would be something. Uh, that would be different. That would be very different because um, he was on his way up over there in Green Bay. But things changed. Uh, the hierarchy changed. The uh, depth chart changed. And he is not where he once was when it comes to the pecking order of wide receivers with uh, the Packers. But Romeo Dobbs, he, he's somebody that could come in and help. Um, I just, yeah, he he, he come in and help. Uh, I just, I don't think Ravens will go after somebody like that, though. He's too young. He's too young, and I'm not even joking. He's he's too. Ravens don't. They not. The only young receivers that they will go after are ones in the draft. Whoa! Next question came from my guy Enonic. Shout out to my guy Enonic. He said, uh, "And Graven, it's been a while since I've asked a question. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. It's been a really long time. But I do be seeing you in the comment section. So I appreciate you. I, 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 you, you are my guy. I always appreciate you. And I remember all your questions from way back. It's been a little while, but." You always will send some five super detailed questions. Um, so I appreciate you. Much love to you, man. He said, um, it's been a while since I've asked a question. Congrats on the newest edition. Hope you and the fam are doing well. Oh, yeah, we're doing really good. I appreciate that, man. He said, my question, with Jaden Daniels' success as a dual-threat quarterback with a great deep ball, efficient rushing, and high completion rate, the media love he's gotten has me thinking. Okay, let's see what he got him thinking about. He said, we know Lamar regularly performs miracles, which are readily criticized by sports media and opposing fans alike. Yeah, um, he does. But let's, let's continue because I had something to say. But he said, if he walked on water, they'd say it was ice. If he turned water into wine, it would be the wrong kind. <laughs> It ain't never the wrong kind of one. But anyway, he said, uh, I know QBs don't play against each other. It's offense versus defense. But if Lamar plays poorly and the Ravens lose, do you think he'll face even more severe criticism because of Daniel's first year success? Oh, my goodness. I, ooh, if that happened, oh, it, it would get so ugly. It, 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 would, it would get so even uglier than it already is before the game has even been played. Because it's already ugly out there, oh, especially the whole Ryan Clark thing. Jaden Daniels is a better passer than Lamar Jackson after five games. But, uh, it, it's like, what does he have to do? What does he have to do to have respect? Same thing we were talking about in yesterday's video, man. Because with Lamar, and I saw somebody say it today. Somebody was like, oh, man, when, whenever a, a quarterback comes along, why is it they, oh, they always got to be better than Lamar Jackson? This quarterback is better than Lamar Jackson. This quarterback, and they, they never say, oh, this quarterback, he's better than Josh. Oh, he's this quarterback better than Joe Burrow. Oh, this quarterback better. It's like so many people always, they go straight to Lamar Jackson. But it, it, it's just one of the things. Like, like I said yesterday, I, I guess Lamar Jackson is the benchmark. He's the benchmark. Um, he said, uh, love the channel and your passion for keeping us up to speed on everything Ravens related. Keep up the great work. No, Enonic, I appreciate you, man. Um, but, yeah, he would face, that criticism would be, it would be wild. It would be on another level. If Lamar went out there and had a bad game and the Ravens lost, oh, it would it would be the roof. Now, if he did have a bad game, he would deserve to be criticized for sure. He for a good game, hey, give him the praise. If for a bad game, give him the criticism. And then you gotta find a happy medium with both, even with a good game or with a bad game. Um, but it's yeah, if if that happened, especially because of all the talk about Jaden. Daniels, especially with all that. Um, I feel like with both uh, Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson, I feel like there's a lot of pressure being put on both, not even just because of their records, uh, to keep them afloat because Ravens, if they win, they will go to four and two. That would be a beautiful thing. Jaden Daniels, if they win, they will go to a five and one. That would be a beautiful thing. Um, but if they lose, you think about the Ravens being three and three, 
and having lost to a rookie quarterback. Um, who's who's been doing this thing, by the way? But um, the, all the comparisons and everything. But then you think about Jaden Daniels. I feel like it's more pressure on the Ravens in this game to win than it is the Commanders, especially because with the Commanders, nobody thought that they would be here. Nobody thought that this would be their rec. Like going into this Ravens game, nobody thought that four and one. No, no way. Nobody would have thought that at all. So, um, but with the Ravens, like there were a lot higher expectations on them than they are for the Commanders. So, if Commanders go out there and lose tomorrow, a lot of people would be like, well, "It's the Ravens. Like they, they couldn't match up with them." And da da da, they're a veteran team. Da da da. But if the Ravens went out there and lost tomorrow, oof. Oh gosh, yeah. Let like, let Lamar even sniff a bad game tomorrow. Oh, it's it is going to be very ugly. But hopefully, we ain't even gotta have that conversation.